Hello and welcome to the Muddy Boots Allotment Channel. During the past 12 months, once a month I've included a segment in my videos which includes jobs for the month. It's no, no means a comprehensive list of jobs that you have to do, but it's jobs that I do complete every month and I find it might be useful for any new growers out there. So what I've done, I've compiled them all together in one review. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of January. For people who do not practice the no dig method, turn the beds over with some winter digging. Leave the soil clods in large sizes and the frost will break these down into a fine tilt. It's really a nice job to warm you up on a cold morning. Top dress or mulch beds. This can be well rotted manure, straw, homemade compost or leaf mould. Add a generous layer across the beds and spread it over evenly. Some people prefer to cover the beds with dark plastic sheeting. This serves three purposes. It prevents the soil from getting waterlogged with the constant rain or melting snow. It creates a dark environment which encourages the worms to rise to the surface and get to work by pulling down any manure or compost into the depths of the bed. And finally, the plastic will actually warm up the soil. This can be an advantage if you want an early start with early plantings and seed sowings. Consider installing water butts or industrial bulk containers IBCs, sooner rather than later. Water butts are available in various sizes and IBC tanks are usually around about 1000 litres. Try to position these so that they can gather rain from any runoff surfaces such as sheds, greenhouses and polytunnels. On my side we are fortunate to have a supply of mains water but it is quite common for a site to have none of these. 2018 summer was a real test for all the allotment gardeners where we saw prolonged hot temperatures and many days without rainfall. The winter months are a good time to lift and divide rhubarb crowns. Some old school gardeners would dig up the crowns and leave it on top of the soil, exposing it to a few frosts and then replanting it at the end of the month. If you have strawberries in pots or containers, Bring them under cover in the greenhouse or move them to a sheltered spot. Just by raising the surrounding temperature by a few degrees will bring them into flower a few weeks earlier for those delicious fresh fruits. Have a look in your local newspaper or search the internet for potato days that are being held in your local area. This is a great opportunity to purchase some of the less popular varieties and also to speak to some of the potato experts. These are often sold as single tubers and may also be sold as a set weight, so do your calculation of your requirements before you arrive there. If you haven't done so already, now is a good time to cut down autumn fruit and raspberry canes. Also, add a light top dressing of sulphate of potash or some well rotted manure. Sprinkle this lightly around the base of the plant. Here are some seeds that you may wish to consider sowing for the month of January. Salad leaves, onion sets, onions from seed, microgreens, chilli peppers, broad beans, leeks, summer brassicas, sweet peas, baby carrots. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of February. February is a good time to sort out seed collections. I guess we're all guilty of hoarding seed packets, so sort through your seeds and be strict with what you keep. Check the sow by date. Parsnips in particular are very temperamental, that is when it comes to germination, so the fresher the better. And also another good thing is to sort them into sowing order, month by month, and this way you are less likely to miss any. Now is a good time to consider pruning fruit trees such as apples and pears, but definitely not any of the stone fruits. Pruning can be carried out right up to just before the sap rises and the buds begin to swell. By pruning early, this will prevent the tree from putting energy into the buds that you may wish later to remove. For the people that choose to, now is a good time to begin cheating early potatoes. Keep them in a frost-free environment with plenty of light 
and also I tend to store mine in either egg boxes or compartment cell trays, usually the 15 or 24 cell types. You may also wish to check and clean out any nest boxes before the birds start looking for a house for the coming year. Now is a good time to check your soil pH and make any adjustments if required. This will depend on the type of crop you plan on growing. Basic tests can be performed with a meter and probe. The probe is inserted into the soil and after a short period the meter will give a reading on the scale. But for a more accurate assessment of a soil, use a soil testing kit which consists of a number of test tubes and the resulting mixes are compared to a scaled colour chart. This test will also indicate deficiencies of certain minerals and trace elements. It is a good idea to create a month by month sowing guide on paper or a spreadsheet. This can include repeat sowings as required. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of March. Planting of early potato tubers can now begin. Traditionally, this is done on St Patrick's Day, the 17th of March. You can, however, get a head start by planting in containers, keep them indoors or in the greenhouse, but if you choose to plant directly into the beds, I usually cover the soil for a few weeks with a dark heavy duty plastic, which in turn will help warm up the soil. And after planting out the tubers, Recover the beds with the black plastic sheets for another few weeks, that is until the first signs of growth are visible, and then the plastic sheeting is completely removed. Whilst looking at your sowing and planting plan for the beds, now is a good time to consider the practice of crop rotation. This reduces the risk of spreading infection to the new crops from the many pests remaining in the soil from the previous year. Any overwintering onions in the beds, now is a good time to apply a high nitrogen feed such as pelleted chicken manure, sulphate of ammonia or a liquid nettle tea. This will encourage a stronger leaf growth which in turn will help produce a larger bulb. If you are planning to create a new asparagus bed, now is an ideal time to plant out the crowns. Make sure that the bed is weed free and has well drained soil as this could be the home for the next 20 years. Remember to plant the crowns across the ridge of soil. It is worth taking a look at the greenhouse glass and give it a clean if required. It is amazing just how much extra light can be gained by doing this. April is a month whereby things begin to take shape on the allotment and the growing season cranks up the gear. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider for the upcoming month of April. Begin harvesting leaves from cut and come again salads, especially those that have been grown in the greenhouse or with some form of protection. These grow at a rapid rate in the warm weather. Harvest the outer leaves and you can expect a good four to five pickings before the plants fade and then you need to re-sow again. Plants may be bursting into life, but so are the weeds. A few minutes spent hoeing each time that you visit the plot should keep them in order, and also keep a lookout for any green fly that may be lurking around. Start constructing supports and structures for any climbing crops such as peas, beans or sweet peas, so that they are ready at the planting out time. Seed sowing continues during the month of April, and peas can be sown directly into the soil using the main crop variety and these will be harvested in the summer. However, do keep a good lookout in case the mice find them because they will eat them. If this becomes a problem, you may wish to consider growing in rain gutters and planting out once the seeds have become established. The first young asparagus peas should be starting to appear around now. Harvest these by cutting about 2.5 cm below the soil level if you have young plants in the first or second year, be sparingly in what you harvest as it can weaken the plant. In the third year is the best time to take full harvest. Also keep some fleece handy just in case of an overnight frost. 
Second early and main crop potatoes can now be planted out during the month of April. And also keep a place handy for these. Remember to earth up any first earlies that may have been planted earlier as any frost will blacken the horns. Here are some jobs that you may wish to consider for on and around the plot during the month of May. Keep a lookout for any light frost warnings and be ready with to fleece over any tender plants that have been planted out. Keep a full watering can in the greenhouse or the coal frame to prevent shock to any young plants or seedlings that are waiting to be watered. If the sun is strong, add greenhouse shading, either using a spray or a physical barrier such as blinds or curtains. Remember to harden off plants and seedlings fully before planting out. Typically, this is between two and three weeks. Winter cabbage can be sown now, which will be ready to crop from late autumn right the way through to the next spring. Erect carrot fly barriers and also protective netting over newly planted brassicas. Cover strawberries to protect them from the birds feeding on any rotting fruits. Cut off comfrey leaves and soak them in the barrel of water, preferably rainwater. This will provide a rich potash liquid feed. Here are some jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of June. As soon as cherries show any sign of ripening, cover them before the birds find them. Make sure that any netting used is secure and there's no openings to trap any inquisitive birds. If you would like to propagate extra strawberries, now is a good time to peg down healthy runners into pots and cut off the leaders after the plants have rooted. Both indoor and outdoor grapevines will benefit from summer pruning. Reduce the current year's growth by at least half unless it is required to build the framework for the rest of the plant. It is about now that sweet corn can be planted out, positioning them in the block formation which will allow for maximum pollination. Cordon tomatoes will be growing rapidly so remove the side shoots to focus all the energy on the fruit trusses. Repeat so quick maturing crops in short rows such as radish, rocket, baby carrots spinach and cut and come again salad leaves. Cabbage white butterflies are out in force now so beware otherwise you may only find the stems remaining on your precious plants. So be sure to cover all the brassicas with a fine mesh netting. Continue to lift new potatoes frequently so that they do not grow into the large jacket size. Harvest season is well underway, so it's time to pick, water, weed and eat. Here are a few jobs to consider for the month of July. Nip out the growing tips of runner bean plants once they have reached the tops of the supports. They will eventually produce another tip and again repeat the same process. This will result in a much bushier plant. At this time of year, when temperatures are high, Plants require plenty of water, none more so than the peas that are producing pods and swelling. Also the bog plant celery, never let these dry out. Remove the lower leaves of tomato plants up to the first fruit truss. This will increase airflow and also light, and in return will help brighten the trusses quicker. Second early potatoes planted back in March should now be ready for harvesting. Before digging up the complete plant, have a little dig around the base of the plant just to check the size of the potatoes. The harvesting of rhubarb should be coming to an end around late June. 
scatter a few chicken manure pellets around the base of the crown and also might be a mulch, but do not cover the plant completely as this can rot the crown. Deadhead sweet peas regularly, although I will think their work is done and stop producing those wonderful smelling flowers. During the warm summer evenings, be sure to allow adequate ventilation in greenhouses and polytunnels, leave the windows and maybe a door open overnight. Dampening down the floor of the greenhouse will help keep humidity at a reasonable level. Placing the bucket of water inside will help, and also then the next day this can be used for watering as it will be at an ambient temperature. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of August. Early sweet corn varieties will be ripening now and as the tassels turn brown, peel back the outer shears and check that the kernels are plump and yellow. Giving them a slight squeeze should show a milky sap which is a good sign that they are ready to pick. Runner beans are in full swing now but they will only continue to produce new pods if the mature ones are picked on a regular basis and also remove any stray growing tips. Rapidly growing veg such as salad leaves, lettuce, rocket can quickly run to seed and bolt in hot dry weather so keep them well watered and harvest on a regular basis. Leeks should be well settled in now and beginning to get established. Make sure that they are not competing against weeds so hoe around them regularly and fit a fine insect mesh if you are plagued by allium leaf miner. Begin lifting onions as the foliage begins to collapse and turn brown. Store them in a drying rack to allow good airflow, but keep them dry. Second early and main crop potatoes will soon be ready for harvesting depending on the time of sowing. A good indicator is when the tops begin to fall over. Once lifted and dried, bag the tubers into paper sacks before they turn green. At this stage they are inedible. Store them in a cool, dark, dry place, a shed is ideal. More strawberry runners can be potted up again to increase stocks. Remove any that are not required as they will sap energy from the parent plant. Christmas may seem a long time away, but now is a good time to consider planting a few potato tubers for a Christmas harvest. Choose a second early variety such as Charlotte, Maris Pier or Casablanca. Plant them in containers so that they can be transferred to shelter under cover as the weather turns cooler. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of September. Once the heads of sunflowers begin to turn brown, Cut them off, leaving around 20 centimetres of stem attached. The head can then be hung up with string and this will be a delicious treat for the birds, particularly the blue tits. With the autumn now approaching, still keep watering celery, don't let it dry out because it will affect the final stages of growth. The blanching will continue and soon it will be time to harvest. This time of year, Brussels sprouts are growing quickly. The small sprouts, known as buttons, will continue to swell. The natural tendency of the plant is to lean towards the sun, so it's important to put a strong stake into the ground next to the stem and to tie the plant to it to keep it upright. Failing to do so may cause the plant's roots to become unstable and this will result in blown sprouts. On a regular basis, any fruits that are in store Check that none are showing any signs of rot. If so, remove them immediately, otherwise it will rapidly spread to the others nearby. Watering in the greenhouse can now start to be reduced since the days are not reaching such high temperatures. Plants need to be given time to dry out and this will also increase the ripening process. As the day draws to a close, close roof vents and any windows as night temperatures may be into single figures and the odd evening may result in a frost. 
At this time of year, light levels fall drastically, so it is time to remove any shading on structures, be it physical or whitewash applied to the glass. The extra light will also help to ripen any remaining crops in the greenhouse. Now is a good time to gather a few seed catalogues from the various companies and look at autumn planted onion sets or garlic. By placing your order early, you will have a much wider selection to choose from. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of October. If we are quick, we can still enjoy the final few pickings of runner beans before the frost arrives. But if they're left too long, they may become stringy. They can also be left on the plant to allow the seeds to swell and these can then be stored to provide seed for the following year. Spring cabbage seedlings that have grown on can now be planted out. Make sure that the ground is firm and also give the planting owl a light dust in the lime. This will help fend off any club root disease. The plant can be planted just below the first leaves and give the soil a good firming to remove any air pockets. Finally, give them a good watering. I prefer to use water with a handful of lime added. Dependent on the variety and the time of planting, now is a good time to look at lifting main crop potatoes. This will reduce any risk of frost damage to the horns and also slug damage that may occur if left in damp soil. Cut down asparagus stems once they start to turn brown and burn them. Adult asparagus beetles can overwinter in the hollow stems. Also, once the bed is clear, think about giving the top dressing of well rotted manure, compost or leaf mould. This will help feed the crowns ready for next season. Both garlic and elephant garlic can be planted out now. I prefer to trim the tops before planting the clove into the soil and this is usually twice the depth of the clove. Spacing for traditional garlic is around 10 to 15 centimetres. Elephant garlic I space at 20 to 30 centimetres. Overwintering or Japanese onions are bred to mature slightly earlier than those planted in the spring. Radar, Shakespeare and Electric Red are three good varieties to consider. Firstly, make sure to check each set for firmness and any signs of rot. Discard these immediately. Plant the set so that the tip is just at soil level and once they are all in position, cover the bed with a net to prevent them being pulled out by inquisitive birds. With the onset of coal long winter nights approaching, now is a good time to check the various seed catalogues and plan your crops for the coming year. Placing orders early reduces the risk of items being sold out. Most of the big jobs of tending to plants seem to be over, so the focus now can turn to protecting plants and starting a general tidy up on and around the plot. So here are a few jobs to consider on and around the plot for the month of November. Now that frosts are starting to make an appearance, now is a good time to consider if you wish to save begonia corns. Lift the plant from the container and remove the stems and any loose soil. Dry and store them in a frost free place. Sawdust or old potting compost is sometimes used together with wrapping in newspaper. Any electronic devices such as water timers need to be disconnected now before the frost arrives. Also remember to remove any batteries in case they leak over the winter and then they should be ready for next season. If you have an outside tap where possible drain it off, turn off the supply and insulate the pipes and replace insulation where required. As the cold weather progresses it gets increasingly more difficult for birds to find food. I place feeders around the garden and the allotment to give them a little help. This comprises of general seed, peanuts, sunflower hearts and also suet cake. Any plants remaining outside over winter will benefit from a little protection, such as a tunnel cloche. 
Make sure that they do not dry out and have plenty of airflow to prevent rotting. Any non-stone fruit trees can now be pruned once the leaves have fallen. Look for damaged, diseased, dead or crossing branches to remove and then other remaining wood can be pruned back to between a third and a half. Look for an outward facing wood to prune back to. Brussels sprouts will be ready for harvest soon, but a nice bonus is to harvest the plant tops. These are like small cabbages and taste delicious. Any tender potted plants that have been outside for the summer, consider moving them indoors or if being left outside, insulate the pots with bubble wrap or hessian and also raise the pots off the floor with the help of some clay pot support feed. Now is a good time to clean and protect your garden tools. Remove any dried on dirt with a stiff brush and apply a light coat of water repelling oil. Some old school gardeners would plunge the spades and forks into a bucket containing a mixture of sand and oil. Any tools with wooden handles can be given a light sanding with sandpaper or steel wool and then apply a light coat of teak oil or linseed oil. Check again all crops that are being stored such as potatoes in bags. The method of suspending cabbages on string has proven to work well for me. Also check onions, both strung up and those in trays. Airflow is a big factor to prevent rotting, so remove any that are showing any signs of failing. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of December. Draw up a plan to scale of your growing area and this is invaluable for estimating the number of plants to grow and also if you practice crop rotation. Clear all debris and fallen leaves from around the base of trees and shrubs. This will help prevent disease in the future. Now is a good time to give rain gutters a good clean now that most of the leaves have fallen. If you are fortunate to have a real fire or a log burner in your house, then gather up the ashes and spread it around the base of fruit trees, add to onion beds and also as wormeries. This is a great source of natural potash. If root crops are still in the ground, such as parsnips, sweet or carrots, look at providing some form of protection against the wet weather. For my carrots that are growing tanks, I place a sheet of polycarbonate across the top. This will reduce the chances of splitting due to the carrots taking up water too quickly. Winter digging over the last few years seems to have fallen out of fashion, but there are times when it still may be beneficial. Heavy clay soils are easier to work after they've been turned over into large clots. The frost breaks these down into a fine tilt. Also, digging in barrel loads of organic matter is a fast and efficient way of getting goodness directly into the soil. In the event that we experience any heavy snowfall, brush it off the windows and doors of any outdoor structures such as greenhouses, polytunnels and coal frames. This will prevent any damage and also increase light levels. If you have any nest boxes sited around your garden or allotment, take a look inside and make sure it is cleared. Quite a few birds will use these boxes for overnight roosting during the colder weather. For those of us that keep worm bins, now is a good time to look at insulating the containers. Worms do not like cold temperatures and by providing some extra protection will allow them to continue breaking down that lovely compost for us to use next year.